Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 19. This is genetic technology 4 on microarrays. Its function is twofold. Number one is to identify express genes by detecting mRNA. And number two is to distinguish between alleles of a gene. Let's talk a little bit more about those two functions before we begin. Functions are very important so that you know where and when to use a certain technique and for what. Anyways, for microarrays, it's to distinguish between alleles of a gene. And uh, to do this, you actually use its DNA. And microarray is also quite interesting because microarray is um, it usually needs two different samples. So we usually compare alleles found in genomes of two individuals or two species. Basically, we take the DNA of individual one and then DNA of individual two, and then we use this technique to compare which allele is the same and which allele is different. So we can figure out uh, the relatedness of those individuals or relatedness between species, um, usually in an evolutionary context. We'll talk about applications later. But okay, if you need to distinguish between the alleles of a gene, you will need the DNA. However, if you use it to identify or ex uh, identify express or transcribe genes, so uh, look at gene expression, this means you'll be looking for mRNA. Why would you use mRNA? Well, if a gene is expressed, it will be transcribed to mRNA, and the mRNA will be translated into protein. This is AS stuff, you should know this already. And therefore, if the gene is expressed, there will be mRNA. So we can actually find mRNA levels and assess how much that gene is expressed. So if the gene is turned on, we would expect high mRNA levels. But if the gene is there, but is switched off, this would mean there will be low mRNA levels or none at all. Okay. Some genes are also very highly expressed, so not only switch on, but very highly expressed, and you will have you expect them to have even more mRNA levels. Okay, so again, to distinguish between alleles of a gene, you use DNA. To identify expressed genes, you use mRNA. And as I said just now, microarrays usually need two samples. So similarly with the mRNA, we are looking between two samples. We are looking at the relative mRNA levels and usually one set of cells act as a control. Usually these are normal cells. For example, we can find out the gene expression in cancer cells okay, by extracting the mRNA from cancer cells. And then we can also extract mRNA from normal cells. Then we can test which genes are expressed in cancer cells but not in normal cells and vice versa. Okay, so this is the two functions and the general idea of what we need. Again, if you need to distinguish between alleles of a gene, use DNA. If you want to lose when, when you want to identify express genes, you want to use mRNA. Okay, before we go into the procedure, let's understand a little bit about how microarray works and what components are needed. Now, one of the most important components is this microarray chip. Now, you might have saw, seen this in my title slide. Okay, I'm just going to go back a little bit. This is um, the gene chip. Gene chip is a trademark name of a brand, so we just call it in general microarray chip. There are many brands. And if you zoom into this little square here, you will see this kind of pattern. This is usually the end result. There are many, many little circles, so called, on this little square. Okay, and each of the circles actually call a cell. This is a cell, not animal cell, plant cell. Like just, it's just called a cell, like a prison cell cell or like a well, okay, so that kind of cell, not animal cell. Now each chip, each square thing here, has over 10,000 cells. Over 10,000 circle, circle, circle things like that. And at, in each cell, 
there are gene probes. Now, just in case you don't remember what gene probe is, we learn gene probe in gel electrophoresis. And again, gene probe is a single-stranded DNA or SSDNA, which are complementary to an allele or a gene. They are kind of sh they are short lengths, but they're complementary to the allele or gene that you want. Um, yeah. Um, just as the case is in gel electrophoresis, gene probe is to used to find a specific DNA sequence. But in gel electrophoresis, we are using one type of gene probe at one time. But in microarrays, we are doing that, but many types of gene probes at the same time. So each cell, each dot, each cell, each dot would have multi -cop multiple copies of one type of gene probe. Okay. And each cell would have a different type of gene probe. So if you have 10,000 over cells, this means you have 10,000 over gene probes types that can bind to 10,000 different genes. <laughs> That's crazy, right? So um, here's a diagram just in case you cannot imagine what's going on, right? So this cell has multiple copies of DNA A probe. Okay, so all inside the same cells, the same probe, and it's different from the rest. Okay, the next cell would have DNA B probe. Again, many copies of the same gene probe in a same cell, but again, it's different type from the other cells. So, so on and so forth. So DNA C again, these are different from DNA A and DNA B, but within the cell itself, many copies of that same gene probe. Now I have one disclaimer. It is slightly different from the gel electrophoresis one because in this case, we do not have a fluorescent marker on our gene probe. Whoop. No fluorescent marker here, just the single strand of DNA bound to the chip, means it's sticking at each cell. It's fixed in position. Now, um, if you're a researcher, you would know which DNA probe, or which cell is, um, which cell belongs to which gene. And you'll use this as a tool. Okay, let's go into a procedure and maybe you'll understand this microarray thing a little bit better. But for simplicity's sake, please keep this diagram here in mind so that um, you can kind of imagine what's going on in the next few slides. Okay, we'll come back to this diagram later. Let's go into the procedure. Whew. Okay, so as I said just now, there are two different functions for microarray. One is DNA, right? One, you obtain DNA. So to distinguish alleles, gene, use DNA. So what do we do with that DNA? We're going to extract DNA from two samples, so individual one and individual two, and then we uh, cut it into fragments. So we don't want the whole stretch. We want it to sm be smaller fragments, usually using restriction enzymes, obviously. And then we denature DNA into single-stranded DNA by heating it. Single-stranded DNA is what we want here. We want single-stranded DNA. Okay, remember that. Okay, this is for DNA microarray. What if we want to use microarrays to identify expressed genes? So in this case, we will need to extract mRNA of, of um, cells from two samples. So in this case, it's cancer cells and normal cells. And basically, you convert it into cDNA using reverse transcriptase. Okay, this should be quite familiar to you. Uh, but I just want you to notice that, again, we are finding ourselves, uh, we are looking for single-stranded DNA. This is single-stranded. I'm really bad at highlighting this. But yeah, again, it is single-stranded DNA that we want here. Two types, again, if you want DNA, you can take the DNA, cut it into fragments, and denature it into a single strand DNA. Or, you can take mRNA and use it as a template to form complementary DNA and make sure it's single-stranded. Okay, now that we have our single-stranded DNA, we need to label it using fluorescent tags or fluorescent markers. Usually, we have red and green, no other colors. One red, one green. So let's say cancer cells, mRNA, uh, convert to cDNA, all red. Normal cells, all green. And then we take this labeled 
single-stranded DNA from both samples, from both cancer and normal, and we combine them and wash it over a microarray. So like, like drop it on one end and then let it slowly run over the chip. Now what will happen is, if the single-stranded DNA is complementary to the gene probes that you have placed on each cell, it would hybridize or bind to them. And this, uh, this bound DNA will not be washed off, so um, it would stay on the chip. However, if the DNA did not bind, it will be washed off. Okay, now at this point, you won't be able to see any results yet because the fluorescence is, the fluorescence is only visible under UV light or laser. So we usually put this in a scanner. Actually, the scanner does everything for us. Um, and what will happen is if the probes have hybridized with the single stranded DNA, you washed over the chip, this would cause it to fluoresce. And this means the gene is expressed. Both the position and the intensity is recorded by the scanner. So not just the light, but also how bright the light is and where the light is. And the intensity, obviously, is proportional to gene expression. So the brighter it is, this means the more mRNA of that particular gene is there. And therefore, the higher the gene expression. So higher intensity, higher gene expression. We do take these positions later as well, and we identify them as named genes. As, a, as I said again, if I'm the researcher, I would know which position belongs to which gene. And if, which, if I see um, some light up and some don't, I would know which gene is expressed and which gene is not. Okay, so maybe that's kind of hard to imagine. So here is some animation to help you understand. So... Um, let's talk about one sample first. Let's, let's talk about the green sample. The green sample here is our cancer, okay, our cancer cells. Just now we labeled it with, oh sorry, it's our normal cells. Our normal cells, we extracted all that mRNA, we converted to cDNA and we labeled it all green. So let's look at the normal cells first, okay, 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 okay. So this is our cDNA from normal cells with fluorescent markers of green color. What happens when we wash them over the chip. So let me play that again. Washing them over the chip, you realize that the red, if they have red DNA, so DNA C here, it will bind with the DNA C probe. And DNA B will bind with the DNA P probe. And DNA A will bind with the DNA A probe. Why? Because they are complementary. This is complementary based pairing. This also means that, you know, um, they are forming hydrogen bonds in front of them. And you can see, um, because there are no other colors, none is being washed away from the slide. They are all bound at each chip. Okay, so what do we see under the scanner? So you can see there's only four lights here. So this is less intense, like moderate intensity. If it's just a little bit, then it's just a little bit intense. Uh, but if there's a lot of DNA C, you can see that it really lights up. It's really intensely green. And again, this will be recorded at by the scanner as well in different intensities. Now, what happens if there are two samples? What would we expect here? Now, we would we would be expecting different colors. Okay, so we have green, and green is from uh, green is from normal cells, and red is from cancer cells. And what happens is when we mix it, and when we move it, wash it over the chip, this is what happens. Okay, you can see in DNA A probe here, there is only red, hypothetical situation. So if there's only red, red is the only one expressed here, then red, it will look red lah. If DNA A B probe binds to DNA B, okay, and it's all green, this would show green. However, DNA C here, you can see that it binds to DNA C probe, uh, have both red and green, and this would result in the color yellow. So, what am I saying here? Other than intensity, the DNA scanner 
at microarray scanner actually also detects different colors. If it's just dull, like no light, this means the gene is not active in either normal or disease samples. If it's yellow, the gene is active in both the normal and disease sample, and that's not very interesting. However, if the gene is green, like if it's a green spot, this means the gene is active in normal only, which is very interesting. Okay, it means it's look worth looking into. And if the gene is, uh, if the spot is red, this means the gene is active in disease only. And that's also very interesting because maybe the disease has dysregulated some of your cells and switched on some genes and switched off some other genes. So these are genes you want to look at in order to study your disease even better. And also to find out its effect on the body and gene expression. So yeah. That's microarrays for you. We will be doing an uh, activity to further reinforce this idea in classes face-to-face -face this week. Okay, so that's the procedure. Let's talk about the applications. So what is so good about distinguishing between alleles of a gene? First of all, it's genetic screening. So if we can identify which genes are different between, say, a person with breast cancer and a normal person, okay, in terms of gene, not even gene expression, then we can figure out maybe what mutations are causing the cancer. And we have identified breast cancer uh, mutant alleles through microarrays, and that's something you learned in a previous video, BRCA1 and BRCA2. They were identified through microarrays. Pretty cool. And then now we can go and screen people for these alleles and tell them the risk of breast cancer. Okay, number two, it could be for drug testing. So I need to figure out maybe which genes the drugs have acted on. So I feed one person with a drug and the other person is normal. So how would that change? the gene expression of those cells. Maybe um, it would have other side effects because it affects more genes than I thought it would, or it would work as I expected. So it, it's great for that. Number three, identify genes which are overexpressed or not expressed in diseases. So as, I, as we know, like every cell in our body are identical in terms of DNA, but the gene expression of different organs, of different cells, of different functions are different and changes over time as well, um, depending on the stage or season or bodily clocks, okay? Like, there's a lot of factors here. So what if we can isolate, um, we can figure out what went wrong in some diseases, okay? And how, say, COVID-19 has, has disturbed our gene expression in our lungs. And maybe we can find a cure by identifying those genes as well. So yeah, these are some microarray applications. There's not a lot of them. Um, this is actually not a huge part of the syllabus, just a small part of the syllabus. It goes even more complicated, but this is the extent you need to know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!